Okay, hi guys. I'm um, Steven. I'm going to talk about building real-time apps with blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm a Singaporean. <laughs> I'm a Singaporean. I'm from Singapore. <laughs> All right, I'm actually currently serving my national service. Uh, that's why I couldn't join the Ruby conference yesterday and this morning. Yeah, uh, and I only managed to actually sneak out this afternoon through the jungle, as you can see in the picture over here, just to deliver this talk to you guys. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, just, it's just joking. For the record of this video in the YouTube, uh, I've actually approved a clearance from my commanding officer to come here for the talk. All right, this is for the record. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, a little bit about me, I'm Steven. Um, this is my, my, my profile. I'm a programmer myself, consultant. This is the company I work in. We do uh, awesome Ruby on Rails development just like you guys here. I also host the uh, uh, Saigon RB, the Ruby meetup in uh, Ho Chi Minh. So you, we'll do it on the first Tuesday of every month. So if you're in Ho Chi Minh, please come and look us up. Alright, what is a real-time app? Basically, just define that user that doesn't need to actually refresh the app to get new data. Okay? And the first thing that we need to do right, is actually get a web socket up. And this can be easily achieved in Rails 5 Action Cable. Okay? But that's just not all. There's other challenges. Some of it that we actually face right, is actually updating the view. Using jQuery, you need to do all the pre-pending, pre uh, pre appending, changing the inner HTML. And it's really very uh, troublesome and messy. And the um, next thing that we need to do is doing all the broadcasting. We need to broadcast the right message, the needed changes to the right clients. And we also need to look at chain reaction. When the application is sufficiently complex, there will be things like one view updating a model, which update another model, and then after they upscale another model again, another view again. Yep. And all these challenges arises because we're trying to sync the data with the view. We are actually trying to control the flow and the mutation of all the data. And with all this, right, there's actually another way to solve all this problem. We can try to do decorative programming which is actually trying to describe the end result without describing how to achieve it. We don't need to care about how the data or the view is actually mutated. So let me give you some of the example. Like in the view, we use React.js. Okay, yeah. So this is a sample, this is a code about uh, React.js. So on the left, I have the React.js component and what this does is that it simply renders out the messages that it was given. So we just need to say, if there's no messages, I will just return no no messages available. And if there's messages, I will just list, I will just iterate out. Yeah. And given um, an array, we'll, the React component will always render according to the array. And when your array change, React.js will automatically change it. Yeah. So this is very decorative. We just need to say how the end state needs to look like. And we don't have to care how the DOM is actually being manipulated. Okay. So decorative approach to our views. And then we don't have to do all the troublesome thing of prepending, appending, adding here and there, changing here and there. And then we can see our view end state very clearly, very easily. All right. And then we can, and we move on. We need to handle a lot of different data and state in our front end. All right. And we try to use Redux, which is a JavaScript um, idea. All right. So, so like in this example, in this example, um, we take a very functional approach towards our front-end state management. And whenever we have a change, which is what we call an action, we write a function, what we uh, call a reducer, they will mutate the state correctly and return it. Like in this case, right, given a new change called add message, we will simply add the message into the state and just return it. And we let React uh, render it accordingly. All right? And using this decorative functional approach towards our front-end state management, we make our final state, the data, or the mutation, very easy to understand. And it also makes it very easy to test. Okay? And can we actually apply decorative style to our back end? The answer is yes. And we can use it to actually solve broadcasting messages problem in real-time app. Yep. So in, real, uh, in broadcasting messages, um, in order to create, update, and delete operation with the database, you often need to update the views, what are the different changes for the clients, what is needed. And all these broadcasting messages will be found in your active record, active job, callbacks, all over the shop. All right? So we, we work with Breathing DB. It provides us a decorative style to um, broadcast the messages. And this is a sample code. In our action cable channel room, okay, we tell Breathing DB, for any changes in the message table that has the current, um, if the receiver has the current uh, uh, user ID, please stream to me all the changes. All right, just broadcast to me all the changes. So we just say what we need, and that's decorative approach. 
And this is a sample that what we think DB will actually stream it to us. It will tell us what's the new value and what's the old value. And then our Redux will take care of the state, man state change management. And then after that, you will pass a new state over down to our React.js and they will render it accordingly. So everything is decorative. So in um, RethinkDB, we take a decorative approach towards broadcasting changes. And we can, we can keep all our broadcasting code in us, inside our channel subscription. And it makes everything very tidy. Okay? And it's very easy to understand which client, which user role needs what kind of changes. Okay? So wiring all of them up, we have our React.js, which is a, almost like a pure function of the view. Okay? And then we have our Redux, which is like a single source of truth because it contains all the state and you uh, manage all the state. And then after that, we still have our Rails doing the back uh, business logic and holding the WebSocket connection. And then we have single D, uh, reading DB, which is like a single source of broadcasting. Okay? And with all this, we have the benefit that we are able to reason our bug very easily. Styling errors, data errors, logic errors, um, broadcasting errors, we, can, we know where to find them. And then it makes um, doing real-time app development much more easier. And when it's easier, it is more fun. These are some resources for you all. Thank you very much.